Hi, hey, it's Sexy J. Quick and dirty time. We are doing a poetry question because so many of you have been asking about it. And where did I find this poetry question? Right here from the SATCrashCourse.com. As I told you guys in the last video, the best place I found so far that has the most accurate, up-to-date digital SAT format and questions. How do I know that? I am checking every one of these questions. I'm working with them right now to make sure I bring you guys the best questions. So that's where I got this poetry question from. And for the upcoming future, I'll try my best to bring you as many questions from here as possible. So if you guys want to check out more from this website and all the resources they have, uh, go to thesatcrashcourse.com. And there's even a special discount code for you guys, studyj, all capital. And that'll get you guys 10% off. And also, if you guys want to check it out, there is a free test available. I made sure that they gave a diagnostic test so that you guys could see for yourself, okay? Now, let's see for ourselves how to do this problem from this honestly super difficult poem of John Milton, Paradise Lost, okay? I didn't even read this whole thing, and I'm a literature major, right? I kind of skipped through some of it, and they're presenting it to us on the SAT. How on earth are we going to do that? This is not AP Lit, right? This is not AP Lang. This is not SAT Lit. That doesn't even exist anymore. So you guys probably know, you've been watching the channel, right? There is a way because you do not have to worry about how difficult is this poem, okay? So as always, we are going to know that this is a poetry question, duh, by just looking at it, but the question itself tells us it's a poem and it gives us, guys, on a very difficult poem, you will notice they give us more info. So we have here, the speaker describes a fallen angel Satan who has been cast out of heaven. So I know that is the main character here. And we are just looking for main purpose. So that just means, okay, what does this poem mean? Kind of, okay? So take a second to skim through the poem. Took a second, right? You can always pause the video, guys, okay? And let's go through these answer choices. And this is going to be our strategy. This is, I believe, the third video I'm making on poetry. And I'm making a lot because poetry is, yes, harder than the other ones. And this is the thing. We are going to do this by getting rid of the answers that couldn't possibly be true. Okay? So even if I'm not 100% sure that I understand John Milton from 1667, I do know for sure College Ward is not going to pick this as an answer. How do I do that? First, first look at C. Terrible answer. What rule of SAT test taking does that break? Politically incorrect or risky, not safe. Whatever you want to call it, guys. College Board cannot make C an answer on an SAT question because that is, look at that, um, omnipotent power of Satan. I don't care how people's religious views are. You can't deny the fact that United States, Christianity is a very dominant force, right? Even on a literature question, we're not going to have on the SAT, the super popular, super mainstream test, we're not going to call Satan omnipotent, okay? We're not going to call Satan all-powerful. Not going to happen, okay? I can guarantee you guys, okay? So that one is out, okay? And this one, detrimental, that's very important vocab. You guys should know that detrimental means... Harmful, yes. Political stability of nations. Why is that there? And you guys can probably guess here, right? You guys are used to finding the traps. They put that there just because the word nations is right here. But political stability. So this is the phrase I want you guys to think about. I've been teaching it this way for the past few weeks and it's working very well. I want you guys to put pressure on the words, okay? Put pressure on the words. What does that mean? I see that phrase, political stability. And I want to make sure, does that work or not? Okay, does that work or not? Political stability, there is literally nothing in this passage that mentions political stability. Nothing. Nothing at all. So I'm going to erase a little bit so I can show you here. Okay. And that's also going to be pretty weird. So I know that overall this is like about, oh, this is going to be a very big key, guys. What is the point of the poems? What is the theme of the poems? It's going to sound like a very nothing answer, but it's a, something about humanity. Something very vague, something very universal. Like, this is human nature. We are born to be blah, blah, blah. Political stability, too specific, too practical for literary passage. And also, like I said, check again. If you guys want to leave in the comments and argue with me, go ahead. There is nothing in here that means political stability. Nothing at all. So we're here, 
and here. And this is going to be a the most common trap answer, okay? And this is going to be strategy number one when you're doing a difficult question, okay? If there is an answer choice that jumps out at me, make sure, make sure, make sure, I just said three times, right? To check the second half. What they do with the more difficult questions is that they know people are gonna be confused. So they make it so that one of the answers, one of the trap answers, is really good sounding for the first half. Let's look at A. To depict the dramatic fall of Satan, that's definitely true. They literally told us in the passage, not in the passage, in the question, in regular words, fallen angel Satan. Like, oh yeah, that works. That's totally fine. But this is when the high scores get separated from the low scores. The low scores will say, okay, that's my answer, done. Do not do that, okay? Do not do that. Okay, that works. Let's check the second part. Let's put pressure on that phrase because I know I'm going to be expecting a trap there. The resulting darkness that engulfs the world. Let's look here. Not lost all her brightness. You can kind of stop there, right? You, you didn't lose the brightness, so that's not darkness, okay? Or what? As when the sun or the moon. Yeah? We have the sun and we have the moon. And we do have the word eclipse, right? But I have the word twilight. Sun, moon, brightness, not lost, twilight. Those are all kind of the opposite of darkness. Those are all light out. So that brings us to answer choice B, which I'll circle right now. This is the other clue, guys. This is the other thing to be aware of. A lot of people go, I did not know what those words meant, so I just didn't pick it. It doesn't matter. Okay, notice here it is the answer B and B has the word celestial, which is a higher level word. Okay, but they make it so that on, I would say, vast majority of these advanced questions, you do not need the advanced vocab. You could have just gotten this by getting rid of A and C and D by not panicking, by not rushing. So our answer here is B. Now, let me explain to you why that is to compare Satan's diminished glory. And this is exactly, exactly how you do these questions. You put pressure on the wording. So that once I put pressure on the wording, this is what the correct answer should sound like. Okay, so I go, I'm going to check every single part of the answer choice. Satan's diminished glory. Okay, his form had yet not lost all her brightness. What does that mean? Or excess glory obscured. So we have, I didn't lose all of the brightness. I lost some. That's diminished and glory. Lost some of the brightness, diminished glory. Next, obscured. I literally do have the word um, obscured over here. That's fine. Brilliance. I have glory. Celestial bodies. This does require vocab. Anybody know what celestial means? Anybody speak Spanish? Uh, okay, I forgot. This is an actual class, right? Celestial means in the sky. Celestial bodies means sun, moon, and whatever. So that's my answer. Okay. So if I did know all of the vocab, my shortest way of doing it would have been just that way. Celestial bodies, what is that? Sun, moon, all of that. So the answer here is B. But I'm not preparing you guys to do the questions you can already do. I'm preparing you guys to do the questions. I had no idea what B was saying, but I could still get rid of A, C, and D. Okay. So for the poetry questions, I've already made videos where people are asking for more. So what I'm planning on doing is, thanks to the help from the uh, satcrashcourse.com, I'm just going to give a lot of practice for you guys. I'm just going to keep breaking down the poetry until this seems natural for you guys as well, okay? So to sum up, this was one of the hardest poems that could ever come up on the SAT. And I do not expect you guys to follow through the vocab here at all. However, pick the phrases that we do know, check, was that in the poem at all in terms of synonyms? If it's not there, it's not there, it's wrong. Get rid of A, get rid of C, get rid of D. Then my answer is B, okay? So I'm gonna just keep these videos coming your way, guys. Good luck on your test every single time you take it. And thanks for watching. Study every day with SexJ. It's the best way. Thanks, you guys. Bye-bye.